Hi guys! Today I'm going to show you how I did this Hatsune Miku Vocaloid inspired doll. She was one of the characters you guys requested for a repaint, so I'll be showing you how I painted her face and how I made her outfit. I had a lot of fun doing this repaint, so I hope you enjoyed. So let's get started. For this repaint, I bought this Barbie from the Barbie Made to Move series, specifically because it has a really possible body. This is a very nice doll, but after I got it out of the package, I realized that it didn't really have the proper proportions for the Vocaloid, since this one is a little too tall and seems to be a little more grown up. Therefore, I decided to take the head of the Barbie, which I really liked, and put it onto a pull-up body instead. If you haven't seen a pull-up doll before, it's a doll with a very petite body and a very large head. So when you put the Barbie head onto the pull-up body, the head seems a little bigger and it makes the proportions look a little more cute. So my Hatsune Miku ended up being a hybrid between these two types of dolls. And don't worry, I'll be keeping the other doll parts for other projects. I like to start my repaints by rerouting the dolls, so start by carefully removing the hair. Then pull out the glue and hair roots from the inside using tweezers. Use acetone to remove the paint on the head. Since the doll came with a side part in her hair, I'm going to take this needle slash stencil tool and poke some extra holes on the top of her head to give her a middle part. Then we're ready to reroute. I made this reroute tool myself with a wooden dowel and a needle. For the hair, I'll be using these viscose fibers I got from Treasure Dolls on eBay. To reroute, take a small strand of hair, pick it up with your reroute tool and then point it into the head. Once you're done rerouting, take some glue and add this to the inside of the head to make sure the hair doesn't get pulled out. Now for the actual repaint part. Remove the face with acetone and then clean with soap and water. Then I sprayed the face with this primer slash sealer for three thin coats before starting the actual repaint using watercolor pencils and two shades of pastels. When doing characters like this, I look at a lot of reference photos and then start by trying to place the eyes. I quickly realized that Hatsune Miku looks a lot different whether she is just like an illustrated drawing or an animation. I was more inspired by the actual drawing, which I think were like the earlier versions, but you can of course choose whatever one you want. I had to adjust the size of the eyes to fit the Barbie's face. And also I had to adjust things generally because the Barbie's face has a lot more prominent features than Hatsune as an animated character or a drawing. So this is more like a Barbie version of a Vocaloid. I work in layers with my repaint, so I use the spray once in a while to set what I've done so I can build on top of it and get more opacity out of the pencils. When you're happy with the repaint, spray it one last time and let it dry completely. For the hair, make two pigtails and then start arranging the bangs. Cut it to the right length, then use watered down glue to gather the strands and fix them in place.
For the squared hair pieces she wears, I used some acrylic paint on top of some cardstock and folded them up. I made her headphones in black polymer clay by cutting out the shape and then using a dotting tool to hollow them out to make room for her ear. Also stick a small bowl of clay onto a black head pin. This is for the microphone. Bake these pieces according to package instructions before using a file to smooth out the edges. Then get out the acrylic paint again and paint on the details. Seal it in with a MAC glaze. Then stick them to her ears. The connecting piece is just another piece of cardstock. Now the head's ready, so we can move on to the outfit. I won't be putting the head on yet, because I don't want to mess up the hair while making the outfit. For the boots, I cut out this little stencil that fit the bottom of the foot, and then cut that out in polymer clay before baking it. I made the pattern for the rest of the boot by covering the doll's leg in kitchen fill, and then clear tape before sketching out the shapes. Cut out the pattern pieces and then trace it onto a fabric of your choice. Paint the top edge blue using acrylic paint. Now you can glue the pieces onto the sole. If you want a more in-depth explanation of how I did this, you can look at my previous doll boot tutorial. To keep any exposed edges from fraying, you can use a thin fabric glue. Cross the top of the boot with a piece of velcro so you can get it off again. And that's our basic boots. Paint on details at the sides. For the skirt, I took a long strip of fabric and used my hot iron to make folds in it. This is a little tricky, so be careful not to burn yourself. Once you've made it long enough to wrap around the door, then sew a line across the top to keep everything in place. Then close it in the back with a piece of velcro. She has a lot of different details on her outfit, so you can make as many or as little as you want. For the shirt, I created a pattern the same way I did for the boots.
When sewing together pieces for clothing that is supposed to be form fitted, it's very important that you make the lines meet. Once you have all the pieces sewn together, start throwing away the excess at the top and bottom and fix the edges with glue. Then sew together the shoulder pieces and close the back with a piece of velcro. For the collar, cut out a piece like this and fold it over. Because I chose to close the shirt at the back instead of the front, I can't glue on the collar because then you wouldn't be able to open the shirt, so I just have to tuck it into the neck opening. For the keychain like thingy she has hanging on her side, I just painted a piece of ribbon with acrylic paint. The tie is also a simple piece of fabric that's been painted blue. The sleeves are made from shapes like this with painted details. I simplified the details on the sleeves, but you can make them as detailed as you want. Glue the sleeves into little cone shapes, and then we're pretty much done. Now we can put the whole outfit together. Also remember details like the O1 on her arm, and also her nail polish. Finally attach the head, and then our Hatsune Miku doll is done. This was a really fun project and when you put everything together it ends up looking really nice. I don't know all the Vocaloids, but Hatsune Miku is my favorite. What's your favorite? Leave a comment down below so I can go look them up and see. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me any requests for other character repaints you'd like to see in the future. And then I'll see you guys in a new video real soon. Bye!